Hello, and welcome to this OncLive virtual peer exchange, Precision Medicine Key Updates for Treatment of Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer. I'm Dr. Benjamin Levy. I'm an associate professor uh, at Johns Hopkins, and I'm the clinical director for the Johns Hopkins Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center uh, at Sibley Memorial Hospital in Washington, DC. I am thrilled to be joined by a fabulous panel. Uh, joining me in this discussion are my colleagues, uh, Dr. Luda Basanova, uh, from University of California, San Diego, Dr. Josh Bommel from the University of Pennsylvania uh, in Philadelphia, and Dr. Becca Heist uh, uh, from Mass General uh, Hospital in Boston, uh, Massachusetts. Um, today we're going to discuss a number of important topics pertaining to the use of targeted agents and oncogene-driven lung cancers We'll discuss the latest data from the ASCO 2020 virtual meeting and the impact of recent FDA approvals on making decisions around treatment selections. It's never been a more exciting time to be in the field of lung cancer given all the genotype directed therapies we have, the ability now to parse out tumors into molecular subsets and wed them to targeted therapies has really been an exciting time for uh, physicians, but more importantly, the benefits gained from, from, from patients uh, is, is quite incredible. Um, so let's get started uh, on our first topic. And I, I don't think you can have a Zoom meeting, a, a web blast, a ad board, or a virtual panel discussion without talking about Adora. Uh, now, the majority of our, our, our um, topics will be on advanced stage uh, lung cancer and the genetic alterations in advanced stage, but clearly uh, we've had some very interesting, compelling, thought-provoking data come out of ASCO 2020 with the, with the utility or the, the potential use of adjuvant osimertinib and resected EGFR lung cancer. Uh, Josh, you want to walk us through the design, the results, your thoughts, and maybe after that we can get some of the, the panelist input as well on this. Sure. Thanks so much, Ben. So the Adora study uh, looked at patients with resectable EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer uh, who had maybe completed adjuvant chemotherapy. So the chemotherapy was at the discretion of the treating provider. This was a worldwide study and the use of adjuvant chemotherapy certainly varies in different countries. But after whatever treatment they were going to receive, patients with stage 1b, 2, or 3a disease were randomized to either osimertinib once daily for three years or a placebo once daily. Now, a couple of points about this study. The primary endpoint of this study was disease-free survival, uh, and that was only the disease-free survival in patients with stage 2 and 3a disease, even though 1b was included. Now, already, starting out, that's a little bit of an interesting endpoint, right? So after surgery, we want to cure patients. So really what we want to do is we want to improve overall survival. Uh, but AstraZeneca had spoken with, you know, whoever when they were designing the study, and it was agreed that disease-free survival would be a reasonable endpoint. Um, at one of their disease, uh, their um, study monitoring visits, they were looking at their data quickly, and they said, these results are pretty remarkable. I think we have to stop the study. And that's something that does happen when a study is being reviewed. Um, so in an unplanned analysis, uh, they presented the findings. And what they found was pretty remarkable. In patients with stage 2 or 3A disease, the hazard ratio for giving osimertinib was 0 0.17. So put another way, 83% reduction in the risk of the cancer coming back or the patient dying with the use of osimertinib. That's pretty remarkable. I don't think that I have seen any study with a hazard ratio that low. Um, now, of course, the maturity here is really low, maturity 33% for disease-free survival. Overall survival is way too immature to make any conclusions. Um, but now the question, of course, will be, how do we interpret these data? From my perspective, um, the lack of an overall survival benefit is notable. We're going to need to follow these patients to see if we can see a survival benefit, though the likelihood of detecting that may be limited by the fact that the trial was unblinded early. Um, 
But I can't imagine this not getting an approval given the marked improvement that was seen for our patients. So I think that if this gains approval, I would talk about this, my, would talk about this with my patients, but I personally find these data very compelling for patients who have stage two or three A disease um, to improve outcomes after surgery. We know that after surgery for lung cancer, outcomes are poor. And this is the best improvement in outcomes that I have seen with any intervention. The one concern I have is the fact that only about half the patients in the trial received chemotherapy. Um, and that to me is a big issue. Uh, chemotherapy, we know improves survival. And I worry that someone might have been told, look, I have this cool trial for EGFR mutation and I can give you chemo or I cannot give you chemo. And then someone goes on the trial, gets randomized to placebo and they could have a bad outcome. That's, that's concerning to me. Um, but I don't know that that's actually what happened. So functionally, when I have these data in front of me, I feel like it's far too compelling to ignore.